All right, um, welcome to Munich to this high-end show and welcome to MBL. I would like to take uh, the chance to explain you a little bit about uh, this Nobeline uh, series. My name is Jürgen Breis, I'm the chief engineer for MBL. I'm working for MBL for over 30 years, so pretty long time. Uh, besides working for MBL, I also make uh, music as a hobby musician and I do also have a small recording studio, so doing some recordings. So besides being an engineer who's able to measure these uh, systems, I have also a little bit the ability to uh, listen to the, uh, the music, so because I know exactly how it feels when I create music, when I record music, so uh, this gives me the chance to also judge the quality of the system uh, that you then or every other customer has at home for listening to, so that you have the same uh, feelings at home that we have during uh, making music. I would like to uh, divide my presentation always in some musical pieces and between some explanations. Um, these explanations on this electronic is a little bit more on the technical side. I try to, to uh, make it not so complicated, but we have really some very nice features in these products that I would like to, to explain to you. But uh, let's start with the first musical piece. One thing that's easy to recognize that this is just not a CD deck or a preamp or integrated. This is developed as a whole family, as a complete family. So all cabinet work looks uh, very similar and you can have this with different color combinations and this will fit very nicely into your home. And all uh, components are connected to each other with a MBL smart link system. That means if you switch off one into standby, all others will also go into standby. Or you can dim, for example, the display and all will dim the same time. And we have also very, very nice, uh, I think, <laughs> remote control for this unit. And with this outer ring, you controlling uh, the volume position and this also eliminates automatically when you come in closer and goes to sleep when you move away. These uh, three products I would like to introduce very shortly before I go into detail. This is the MBL N31. This is a CD deck. This CD deck has six different input paths, uh, three digital outputs, has obviously also analog out because it's a DA converter and has also a CD drive. Then we go over to this integrated amp. This integrated amp has a preamp section and also a power amp section. Below, this is our stereo power amp and we're using the preamp out of the integrated to drive this power amp and the power amp drives the, the base part and the integrated power amp does drive the upper sections. What is also very uh, nice feature, you see here now the playback mode with just some basic informations and when you come closer then you see that these functions slide in so you know what function is behind what button and this is also changes depending on if you just change inputs or if you just adjust different materials. So I would like to uh, head over to the second music example. Of those so close beside me Which are you? God bless the ground I shall walk softly there And learn by going where I have to go Okay, let's start uh, with the digital sources. One source is the CD drive. Um, with uh, this CD drive we have mounted on a sandwich board with several different materials to prevent any vibration and even more this sandwich board has an irregular shape that even if it has a tendency to vibrate you get a very irregular mode so you know tonal characteristic. And in every CD drive the CD spins and creates some 
air turbulences, but to prevent any sonic feedback, we have some acoustic shapes built in that prevent any standing waves on the horizontal or on the vertical plane, so we get the best quality out of a CD. And uh, when you stop playing a CD for 10 seconds, then the drive goes into sleep, that all these regulations will not disturb the other uh, digital inputs. Next, we have uh, two USB inputs. Uh, one is USB Auto Class 1, uh, the other is USB Auto Class 2. The reason is that we have used also this older USB Auto Class 2 is because of Windows. If you have a Mac system or a Linux system, you can connect to any available USB input. But if you have a Windows computer and uh, would use this DA converter right out of the box, uh, you will be happy to have a USB 1 input because uh, Windows can work also natively with USB Auto Class 1. But even Windows 10 cannot run uh, USB Auto Class 2 natively, so you have to install either a driver, which is available at the MBL website, or just use the USB Audio Class 1. Both USB inputs are isolated from the DA board so that no disturbance from the ground can enter the DA section. And also both inputs are self-powered, then meaning they do not need any current from the connecting computer. So you get really a clean signal inside. You've been crying, your face is made. Your tears on my dress She's had you again I can tell Oh, I know that look so well before I head over to the other digital inputs, I would like to explain one nice feature of our USB inputs. So we do not uh, need only no current from the computer device. We do also send back during the handshake protocol that we do not really do not need any current. And this opens the path, for example, to any mobile phone or iPhone or also Android device. We uh, can uh, connect uh, an iPhone to one of these USB inputs uh, with an adapter. You can send 24-bit, uh, 192K, and even DSD signal to the DA converter, and it plays this bit perfect and cheater-free. I will uh, demonstrate uh, just as a small example. So I head over to this input uh, section and uh, choose, for example, the USB 2 input. and. Here I have my USB cable and uh, the adapter. I have this Onkyo app uh, on this iPhone and this Onkyo app can play any file format and any sample rate. First I would like to uh, demonstrate 24-bit 192K. You can see on this display this 192K and 24-bit uh, in this place pack. Uh, perfectly bit true without conversion to a, a downward uh, sampling. Next is a DSD file. You can see uh, if you have good eyes DSD. So it plays perfectly without conversion to PCM or anything. So with full data and full bandwidth. All signals are going through uh, our galvanically isolated, so also our AES, EBU, SPDIF and TOSLINK obviously, and all are handled care with the timing variation, so-called chitter. So we have three-stage chitter reduction built in. The first stage just is responsible that we lock into any uh, possible uh, input sample rate, and this is done by a digital uh, time filtering with 10 kilohertz bandwidth. The next is an analog low-pass filtering with one hertz, so this is very, very smoothly and fill us out any variations. And the third stage is that we have an asynchronous uh, FIFO buffer that reads out the data from a buffer with a very precise crystal timing, no matter what variations still are on the input side. So this gets rid of any cheater. And this, for your ears, uh, is then a very really analog type uh, sound without any harsh inf digital information. You will not able to measure any cheater on this device. So I will head over to the next music example. More silver than blue. Ah, I am waiting for you. 
Yes, I'm waiting. Yes, I'm waiting. Yes, I'm waiting. So after uh, reducing the cheater, so uh, we get very precisely timing, we head over the signal to the digital filter. We have a, a sort of a school book digital filter built in, which is um, a sharp roll off, a linear face type. And with this filter, you can have really textbook clear signals, but um, some saying that uh, this uh, pre ring is audible. We do agree, so we have also built in a minimum phase filler and with this minimum phase filler we do have no pre-ringing at all as it is in the nature. In nature you do not have any pre-ring. You have all ringing just after the first impulse and we have just a bit uh, post-ringing. These are the two extremes and we have as the third alternative of filler which is in between is a slow uh, roll-off linear phase filler. You have a bit of both worlds. Actually, um, modern recording are mastered at a very high level and then this brings that some digital fillers are sounding harsh and digital and this is due to intersample overload uh, distortion. So even if the sample, native samples are below full scale, you can get with these digital fillers signals that, that do clip. So we have a built-in 3dB headroom margin in this digital filter and this prevents any uh, clipping at all. So you get, even with very loud masterings, a clear signal. And this uh, signal is then head over to the DA converter. We have um, two different techniques for, we have the Delta Sigma for quiet signals to have a smooth natural sound and uh, multi-bit for louder signals to have really good control and uh, between both techniques there is a transition. For the reason that we use four different paths, we have set the transition between multi-bit and delta sigma with these four paths to different levels. So we get a very homogeneous transition of both techniques. And last but not least uh, for this DA converter, we have a fully balanced signal path from the DA chip to the output. So with all this technique, I know it's a little bit complicated or sounds a little bit complicated, but these are all responsible for this very good sound of this uh, CD deck. So after the DA converter, we are obviously in the analog uh, area. In this integrated, we have built in obviously a, a preamp section. This preamp section does have symmetrical inputs, asymmetrical inputs for RCA. We have two different input impedance areas and also the option to include a phono stage. And what's uh, unique with this uh, preamp section is the so-called unity gain feature. This unity gain feature is set to that that way that if a good mastered CD or digital source is played back, that this uh, feature allows to have the maximum dynamic range and uh, have this power amp also uh, goes to this maximum output power. So with this feature, you get a benefit of lower noise, of lower distortion, higher bandwidth, and uh, at the end, you have more signal transparency, so you have more uh, signal going from the DA converter to the power amp stage. In the power amp, um, we have our built-in our LASA 2 technology. LASA stands for Linear Analog Switching Amplifier. And this technology has several unique features. One feature is, for example, that we have a constant uh, output uh, impedance. That means that the frequency response of this power amp is the same for 2 ohm or for 8 ohm or for 4 ohm loudspeakers, so that they do not variate. Uh, the next feature is that the output distortion is, uh, doesn't variate with frequency. So at 20 hertz or at 20k, we have the same low distortion. And so this doesn't change the tonal characteristic of an instrument at all. And this also belongs to the preamp section and this also belongs to the uh, DA converter section. So our aim is that to transport uh, the source 
the music uh, content as neutral as possible. But uh, neutral, you do not have to mistake with sterile or something. We don't want to, we want to transport the signal as it is. So the next music example. Everybody's got the fever oh, That's a something that you should know Fever is a, such a new thing Fever started long I think it's time for the last uh, explanation of this area. This is a little bit complicated to explain, but it's very, very important. It's the capability that a power amplifier can drive real loudspeaker loads and not only measurement uh, resistance. So you may ask yourself in the past, there are some 200 watts uh, power amps that can drive any loudspeakers then have also 200 or 500 watts and they're sounding very weak and have problems with this type of loudspeaker or that type of loudspeaker. For us, it's very important that this power amplifier, especially in this LASA 2 technology, can drive any uh, load. So no matter if this is a resistive or capacitive or inductive load, typical loudspeaker impedance does vary in amplitude and has some areas where the voltage comes after the current or where the, the current comes after the voltage. And this is very difficult to measure, but we have a measurement method. And so we can really look into why which amplifier <laughs> does sound weak at some real sources and other are not. So just giving 200 watt or 400 watt does tell you nothing about the capability if this amplifier is under stress or not. And with this LASA 2 technology, you can connect any load to it and this amplifier will never sound stressful. I would like to thank you for your time, for your attention. I hope you enjoyed the music a little bit and I hope that you got a little bit understanding what's going on uh, with these uh, systems. And uh, if you have some questions, I will be available for you. And so thank you.